Welcome back. Today my buddy's here with me in the shop and we are working on his Dodge Dakota. Um, so we'll do a quick overview of the uh, truck. This is kind of a cool truck, I think. I like them. It's a regular cab, short bed, manual transmission, V8, mini truck. So we got kind of the paint greased up a little bit, but that's all right. Uh, you got the RT style wheels. This is not an RT truck. The RTs were all automatic, so you had to get a, a 318 or a 4.7 to get the 5 speed. But it's just kind of got a nice stance. It looks pretty good. The wheel caps are off the back. He's got those though. But there you go. I just, I kind of like these. Um, he's got the, the newer Challenger console in there, which is pretty sweet. Under the hood here, we've got a V8. But if you know what you're looking at, that is not a Dodge V8, is it? So what we're going to do today is swap from an open differential to a limited slip differential. And we're going to kind of walk you through some of the process, not the whole thing. We've already started on it. I'm going to try to avoid doing a lot of the work. It's, it's 90 degrees in the shop today, and uh, I'm dressed accordingly. Legitimately, it's been high 80s and even touch 90 for a while here. But we'll go ahead, we'll get started on where we're at with this axle right now. Okay, so what we've got, we've got a Chrysler nine and a quarter rear axle, and we are getting ready to take it apart. Now, one of the issues that we're gonna run into with is we are taking it apart while it is actually hot. Um, it's not hot, hot. I mean, I can touch it, it's okay, but it is still about 125 degrees. Granted, it's 90 in here, so that's not a huge difference, but that may play a slight, slight issue with our tolerances here. So what we're getting ready to do now is check backlash of the ring and pinion. So we will be reusing this ring gear on a different carrier, a limited slip carrier. So before we disassemble it, we've got our dial indicator set up as close to 90 degrees as we can with this. It's not a perfect 90. Uh, you really can't get in there at a perfect 90 most of the time. As long as you can repeat before and after what it's actually at, you'll be all right. So what we'll do is I'll just grab this ring gear, kind of wiggle it back and forth. And the goal here is to move the ring gear, but not the pinion. So we are checking for the, the space between the ring gear and the pinion. And I just moved it a little bit. So let's see if I can zero it out. Okay. Um, getting this dial indicator set up is one of the more annoying points on the whole deal. When you're done, you want it to come back to zero. So there's, so as we're watching this, this one currently has 10 thousandths of backlash or actually just a touch under 10 thousandths. Okay. So when we set this back up, we'll need to set it back up with just a touch under 10 thousandths. Uh, without looking it up, I believe spec on these is seven to nine thousandths. This one is a junkyard axle, so God knows how many miles are on it. Uh, it might be a little bit looser, but we want to set it up where it's at, because that's where it's got its pattern set and where it's wore in together. All right, I'm gonna set you up on a time lapse. Um, actually, let's talk through what's gonna happen next. What's going to happen next on this Chrysler axle, and most of your Chrysler axles are like this. We will remove these two bolts here, which are the retainers for the adjustment. We will then loosen, but not remove, the four cap bolts. After we loosen those, we will use a special Chrysler tool that will slide in from the end of the axle, unthread these adjusters, and then we will finish removing these four bolts and the carrier will just drop out. It takes a little bit to get used to this setup, but once you do, it is one of the easiest axles to take a carrier in and out of. So I'll go ahead. There's not going to be sound because I'm going to set you up on kind of a slow, a fast motion deal. And um, it's not going to be me. It's going to be my buds doing this today because it's his truck. And yeah. So I've got other work to work on. He's gonna keep going with this, but we'll set you up in a spot you can see it.
So my buddy here owns Hayden Built. Is it Industries or just Hayden Built? Just Hayden Built. Okay, so he's got Hayden Built, which specializes in LS swaps into Dakotas, which is what he's got in that one. Um, so what we're doing here is we're so swapping the rear differential in his truck and this is the one that's coming out so he's going to continue taking these ring gear bolts off i wanted to kind of zoom in before he did that uh you can probably see yeah that one's got a pretty clear l on it that stands for left hand thread almost all ring gears are done with reverse or left hand threads so to take these out you will actually turn them like you wouldn't tight, tighten a normal bolt so he's going to go ahead, he'll keep, he'll zing the rest of these out. Now for those of you that watched my video on tool selection, power tool kind of stuff, I didn't tell him what to use as far as an impact. I had my air impact, my electric impact, and he just went ahead and grabbed the electric without anything, without me saying anything. So what we're going to do, we want to get a punch that is smaller than the threads because you do not want to damage the threads on the ring gear. Um, I don't have a brass, I, I used to have a brass punch, I don't know where it went, but what he's going to do is just kind of tap across here and drive this out. Ring gears are a loose, are a light press fit onto the carrier. So as you can see, he's doing it with this rather small punch. I'll just catch this ring gear so it doesn't drop and nick on something. And these ring gears are kind of heavy. I'm not, I, they're not heavy, but they're heavy for the size. They're probably, what, 10, 10 pounds? Yeah, at least. So we'll let that gently set down to the bench. Now we'll take our carrier. I'm going to flip it over and show you why we're doing this. So this is the carrier coming out of the truck. Am I in frame? Yeah. Okay. The carrier coming out of the truck this is what would be considered an open differential. These spider gears, which allow your axles to turn at different speeds, are just free to spin. There's nothing stopping them. In fact, in an open carrier, if they get to where they're binding up or anything, that means there's something wrong. Now, that is our carrier that's been removed. The carrier that we're installing is Junkyard Fresh, and I cannot spin these. The reason that I cannot spin these is this is a limited slip differential. So if we look on the top, this, uh, this unit here, Track Lock, I believe that's the Spicer limited slip brand. Uh, don't quote me on whose that is, but it is an OEM style limited slip. If you look down in there, there are clutches and steels underneath the uh, spider gears. They tighten, they tighten the movement between this outer spider gear and the case. So that's what gives you your limited slip action. All right, now when we go to put the new ring gear in, and I'm going to shut this off for a minute, and we'll pick it up, but we're going to have to clean this surface in this surface to make sure that they are nice and clean before we put them back together. So now we've got this thing all cleaned up. The ring gear is sitting on cardboard and some people are probably not going to like this. Sometimes they'll use a piece of wood, sometimes whatever. Uh, the reality is that this is a pretty hard steel and as long as you don't chip it, you're not really going to damage it. Although the vise is also pretty hard steel. Anyway, this is not a slip fit. There is a certain amount of press. One of the things you can do that I've never done is heat the ring gear and cool the carrier. Um, but what we'll do here is I've got the bolts cleaned up as well. The K 
carrier, I just take it, drop it in. As I'm dropping it, I'm looking to make sure I'm lining up the bolt holes. And this one, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, but there's like an eighth inch gap. So what I'll do now is I'll take a couple of these bolts. We'll just go ahead and start them. So we'll go ahead, I'll start four of them so we got a nice cross pattern. And there's a couple different things you can do here. Um, one of them is that you can evenly tighten these to draw the ring gear on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brass hammer and just kind of gently tap. And that's drawing it down some. Oh, wrong way. Reverse threads. So draw that down some, then we'll grab, I'm just gonna take my ratchet, give it about a half turn. Just do that in a crisscross pattern around the whole deal. It's like you're tightening the lug nut on a vehicle. And what this will do is just slowly snug this thing up. And I got a little out of sequence there, but that's fine. Okay, so now I'm to the point where all four of these are snug. In different vices, uh, this may or may not work very well. This one it generally does. There's windows in the carrier that this can clamp onto. It will hold it from spinning. So we'll be able to tighten these down. Now the next step here, and we'll shut the camera off because I'm running out of video, video footage, but I'll show you one. I'm going to use some blue thread locker on each one of these bolts. My rule is anything that spins gets some form of thread locker. So you don't need much. I kind of missed my mark on that one, so I'll give it another one but just like a drop of blue thread locker. This is medium strength. It is service removable. So we'll go ahead, we'll get the thread locker on all of these ring gear bolts. While we're doing that, we'll look up the torque specs. So we torque these things correctly and uh, we'll turn the video camera back on then. All right, I'm not, I'm not gonna do this whole sequence because my memory card on the camera is almost full and there's more stuff I need to film. But what we're gonna do the torque spec on this, the ring gears for this 2003 nine and a quarter are 115. We're gonna kind of hold this to make sure it doesn't slip out. And uh, we'll go through the 12 or so bolts in a crisscross, and then we'll do it all the way around to make sure that we have not missed anything. But I'm gonna shut the camera off now because like I said, I'm running out of film time. Now we've got all these bolts tightened. What we're gonna do before we set this up in the truck is we're going to lubricate the bearings. So I'm just gonna take some new gear oil. You never wanna put any metal together dry. So anytime you have metal, you wanna put it together. And it is so freaking hot out that this gear oil is running like 5W30. So there we go, we'll lubricate that up. Our bearing race now has oil on it. We'll do the other side. We'll get this differential set in the truck with the caps on and then we'll pick the video up there. All right, real quick before we put this all back together, on these Chrysler axles, we have these threaded collars that adjust the backlash and preload on the carrier bearings. So there's one in each side it's got a hex shape in the center. That's what the special tool you may have noticed earlier is. And uh, yeah, this thing's ready to go back together. So what's going on here is he is using the Chrysler axle adjustment tool, which I suppose I should get a video picture of at some point, but he's going to tighten this up and bring this ring gear snug to the pinion first. To do this, in order to get this set up, you want these caps snug 
so that they are actually touching the axle, but you don't want to tighten them yet because the adjustment sleeve and the race still need to be able to slide inside of there. So we'll adjust that up and then afterwards come back to the other side, torque it out, torque it and the lash is probably pretty close at that point. Okay, so this is our Chrysler axle tool. It's basically a nut welded to a section of uh, hex stock and I welded a little nub on there because if you don't, this can slide through the retainer and then it's a real pain to get back out. So that's it. Slides down the tube. And lining it up into there is somewhat of a challenge, but it can be done. There it goes. So what we'll do, we've got this set up to where the driver's side came in and touched the ring gear against the pinion. The passenger side is now tightened to the point where it's just touching. And one of the things that you have to do is actually squeeze those bearings a little bit. So when I tighten this up, Yes, there is a torque spec for this too. And right about there it is. So now we will check our backlash. Now is it too tight? Can't move it. Okay. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to back off the other side. The other side got tightened a little bit too much. And uh, we'll do that again. But what you're looking for is you want to tighten those bearings a little bit so that there's actually pressure on them. And then we'll get it back to the lash that we had or very close to what we had when we took it apart. So we'll go ahead and shut the camera off and we'll mess with this for the next three hours. All right, the sun's in a spot where this is getting kind of hard to get an angle at, but we are back together. And within half a thousandth of where we are were before we took it apart, the resistance on the turning feels pretty good. So it's ready to get torqued. So we'll have to torque these four bolts, snug up these set screws, and uh, that'll be it. And like I said a couple times throughout this video, we're running out of space. So that's going to be a lot of stuff that doesn't get videoed. Okay, so here we are. This is for all intents and purposes complete. Now one of the things that you'll notice here, uh, if I spin the one axle, it will spin this whole ring gear assembly, which with an open differential, it would just spin the spider gears. So I'll grab the axle shaft, spin it, and as it does that, it's also spinning the opposite side the same direction. So if you wanna be able to do two wheel burnouts like a cool kid, uh, you got to have the limited slip or a locker. So that's it. The uh, the axle is not totally put back together But it's close enough that I'm gonna call it done and uh, It's pretty awesome that I haven't really had to do that much work on it. It's kind of nice Maybe I need to find somebody to do my work So hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later <laughs> uh yeah i guess you can see that so up underneath here this is the side of the oil pan and uh this is one of the first things that i noticed under here um that's just an an fitting that goes back into the oil pan and you can see the mounts are still bare steel and not really rusty yet 